Hello. One of my subscribers asked me to do a video on pet portraits, engraving pet portraits on glass. Now these videos are aimed at beginners or people relatively new to engraving and also I was asked to do a step-by-step -step video. So I'm going to try and put quite a lot into this video which might make it a bit long but if you find you're getting a bit fed up with a bit, feel free to fast forward through to a bit that's more interesting for you. I won't be offended, I promise. But if we're talking about step by step, the first thing to mention, and I know it might sound a little bit flippant, but the first thing to consider is which pet are you going to engrave? If I had to choose between engraving Lily, the Cocker Spaniel, or Leah, the last Apsom. The easier of the two to engrave is Leah. And the reason for that is very simple. Lily, particularly around the head and face, she's quite black. And when you engrave on glass, what you're doing is you're making it white. So it's while it's perfectly possible to engrave a black animal, it is quite a bit more difficult. You have to make them look really, really shiny or put them against a, a light background or something like that. So if you have a choice, then I would suggest a, a light coloured animal is easier to start with. Now the next thing to think about is which photograph are you going to use as the basis for your engraving? Now it might be that you are an excellent artist and that you can freehand draw your picture onto your glass. If that is the case, then this is a step you don't need to worry about, but for most of us, myself definitely, we need to pick a photograph that we're going to use to base the engraving on. In my opinion, the best photographs to use are taken from the eye level of the pet, considering, and they show the face either in profile or in three-quarter profile. In my experience, those ones tend to work out best for the engraving. Having said that, if someone has commissioned you to do an engraving and the photo they've sent you is one taken from above the pet looking down with a great big nose in the middle of the picture and the rest of the animal foreshortened behind that, fine, if that's the photo they want engraved, that's what you'll do. But if you have a choice, usually from eye level and with a profile, either full or three quarter profile, tends to work best. The other thing to think about for photographs is to make sure that what you have is clear enough to engrave from. A lot of the likeness in a pet portrait comes from the lie of the fur or the scales, I suppose it was a fish or something like that, but, but how that's lying on the animal. And if you're picture is blurry, you just can't see that properly. That's not to say you can't engrave from, from it, but you might end up having to go onto the internet to look for clearer photos of the same breed of animal to give you an idea of how the, how the fur, the hair lies in each case. But the clearer a photo you get, you can get the better. Something that shows the hair, shows where the whiskers are and the eyelashes and all these other things that are just the details that make, that make the engraving come alive. At the same time that you're picking out the photo to engrave from, you should be thinking about the surface of the glass that you're going to engrave on, by which I mean, is it flat or curved? If you are engraving onto a curved surface, a glass or a vase or a bottle or something of that nature, then if you have a photo which is really in landscape format, perhaps a nice picture of a dog sitting very sphinx-like and looking lovely, if you try to engrave that onto a curved surface, it's likely that when you look through the engraving, when you're looking at the face of the, the animal concerned, as you look through, the tail end will appear behind. 
because the engraving will have gone right round the side of the glass and that the side of the animal sort of disappears into some strange unknown dimension up the side. So if you're going onto a curved surface you're probably better to pick a photo that gives you a, a portrait view of the animal rather than a landscape one. In my case I'm going to be working on flat glass. In fact what I've done is I've got a, a small clip frame and I'm going to engrave on the glass on this one. Now, when a clip frame arrives, it's usually got um, a plastic polycarbonate. Obviously, that's not much use for engraving on. It's too thin above anything else. Um, but I've just taken that off and I've cut a piece of... This is 3mm float glass. And I've cut that to fit the size of the clip frame and ground the edges so that's ready to engrave on. Normally, if I'm doing a framed pet portrait, I prefer to use a shadow box type frame so that the, the glass is supported in front and then there's an ear gap between that and the back. In my experience, that tends to show off the engraving to its best. But I've never tried a clip frame and I thought I would give it a go and so it's a bit of an experiment for me as well. So the next stage, of course, is to transfer your image onto the glass that you're going to be engraving on. In my case, that's quite simple. I've got flat glass. I can print out the picture that I want, having reversed the image, because I'm going to be engraving on the back of the glass, and I want the, the picture to look the right way around from the front when you're looking at it. So having printed out the picture, I can lay that down, put my piece of, piece of glass on top of it and simply draw the main lines with a, a marker pen onto the glass. So that's quite simple. The only thing I have to be very careful to do is to keep the position of my head very steady so I don't get distortion and a parallax effect when I'm copying out the lines. If you've chosen to engrave onto a curved surface, then if it's something like a glass or maybe a wide necked vase that you can get inside, you can use the same technique. You can print out your picture, put it inside the glass, hold it in place with sticky tape or a bit of blue tack or something like that, and just draw the main outlines onto it. If it's a narrow necked vase or a bottle or something that you can't get onto the inside of, you may have to use something like carbon paper. So put a sheet of carbon paper between the printed image and the glass and follow the lines round on your image with a pen or a pencil pressing down so that the carbon paper transfers the image onto the glass. I use that system quite often. It works quite well for me. I have seen people who've said that it works better if you paint the glass with a light coloured paint to start with and then the carbon paper marks show up better in the paint but I haven't tried that. But if you're struggling that would be something to try. So with the photo copied onto the glass the next stage of course is to move on to the engraving. So I'll go through into my little workshop getting well wrapped up against the gold and we'll make a start. Whenever I'm engraving, I always start by going over the lines I've drawn with a little white Arkansas stone. That doesn't really mark very deeply onto the glass, but it does make the marks permanent, so they're not going to come off when I'm working on it. And for pet portraits, I prefer to start by putting in the eyes, nose and mouth first. Now an eye, when you think about it, has a curved surface. So I'm trying to take out enough glass here to leave a, a depression, a curved depression in the glass. The white Arkansas stone that I'm using is perfectly capable of cutting away at the glass the way I need it to. But it also leaves a smooth enough surface so that I can polish it later and make it darker. Which obviously for a, a dog's eye it needs to be quite a dark colour, quite a dark tone.
do both eyes in the same way and then move down to do the nose. Most dogs have got a little black nose and Leah is no different. So again, using the white Arkansas stone lets me pick out the shape but leave a smooth enough surface so that I can easily polish it back to give me that very dark tone that I'm after. This is mainly a surface engraving. I'm not cutting very deeply into the glass, but I am taking away enough to give us a slight 3D effect round about the eyes and the nose. And the other thing I tend to mark in at this point is the position of the mouth. These three things, the eyes, the nose, the mouth, are sort of placeholders. They let me see where everything else should be in relation to these three main features. Having done the initial engraving, I then have to come back and start to polish that to make it a little bit darker. This is just a green rubber polisher. And as I work, it begins to smooth down the surface again and make it a little bit darker. I know it still looks very white in this, but that's because, of course, the rest of the glass hasn't been engraved yet. As we go on through this process and you see how it looks with the other areas round about it engraved, you'll see what I mean. Now for the nose, although I didn't use the white Arkansas stone where the nostrils are, because I want those to be really dark. Although I didn't use the white Arkansas stone for that, I am going over it with the green rubber so that it doesn't look like I've just forgotten to do those bits. It, they will still be part of the engraving, but they should be very, very dark when we're finished. So to get it as dark as I possibly can, I've now got a, a very fine little pencil rubber in here. This is a grey one, so it's, it's quite soft, but again, just working away to darken down the tone in the eyes and the nose. With those main features in, it's now time to start roughing in the rest of the picture. This area is going to end up as a slate grey colour. So because of that, I've started by using a green abrasive stone here because it gives me a slightly smoother finish than the diamond does. And again, it's easier for me then to polish that back to get the tone that I want. You have to, whenever you're doing a pet portrait, you have to look very carefully at the direction the hair is lying and use the tool and the direction of the movement of the tool to replicate that in the glass. So it's a bit like when you're painting, the brush strokes help you to show the texture. In engraving, the movement of the burr can help you to add the detail of the direction of the fur in this case. So I'm just working my way around the face and trying to replicate what I see in the picture of the way that the hair is lying. Yeah? And this process continues over the whole of the whole of the engraving. Again, carefully looking to see which direction the hairs are lying and making sure that the movement of the burr matches that. Sometimes you have to turn the glass round to help you get at the bits that you're after. Now, when it comes to doing the white areas, I've moved to a diamond burr, a spherical diamond burr. There is a water dripper going at this point, so it's not going to be the whitest that I can get out of it, but it will leave a whiter tone than I will get from the green bar. So, as I did with the green stone, carefully looking at the photograph that I've got at the side, looking to see which direction the hairs are lying and where I need to move the bar to replicate the shape of the hair. And I'll just repeat that whole process 
over the whole of the, the whiter areas. Now, I've now moved on to a, a much larger flame-shaped diamond burr. I've got a bigger area to cover here and this will let me do that a little bit more quickly but still give me enough control that you can see where the hair is lying on the dog. At least that's the idea. <laughs> and the process continues. We, again, still we're on whiter areas here so I still have the flame shaped bar and working my way down looking at where the hair lies. Now, I'm sure you don't want to spend hours on end watching me roughing in this shape, but just to give you an idea, when I clean it up, that's how it's looking, and I continue that until everything's roughed in. The next stage is to start re-establishing the darkest areas of the engraving. In order to do that, I have to smooth out some of the marks left by the burrs. What I have here is the white Arkansas stone and this will work by pre-polishing the areas that I want to be the darkest areas. And once I've been over those areas with the white Arkansas stone I can come back with a green rubber polisher as I have here and you can see that you start to get the shadow and the shaded areas becoming much more obvious going over those bits. I have also uh, here quite a coarse blue rubber. Uh, this helps me to get a darker tone in those areas where I think it's needed. And I can go over the top of that, I can use an Arkansas stone underneath that and then polish it with this blue rubber. I could go with the blue rubber and then go over the top of that with the green rubber, which will make it darker again. But the whole idea of this stage is to re-establish the darkest tones on the picture. That is That carries on for the whole of the engraving. And you can see here, I've got a white Arkansas stone again, because it happens to be a little dark area here that I want to make sure that I pick out properly. And once I've been over those areas with the white Arkansas stone, I can come back in with the, the green rubber again. And hopefully you'll see how, where I go over where the Arkansas stone has been, it gets very much darker. Having been in and established all the dark areas, of course, the next stage is to go and get the highlights back again. At this point, I have quite a fine rat tail bar, a diamond bar, and I'm working dry just now because I want to get this as white as I can get it to be. Again, I'm always looking at the direction that the hair is lying and trying to replicate that in the movement of the bar so that it looks like the hair on the dog. Using the bar dry lets me get quite a white tone here. And whenever you get the white tone, it always makes the darks look darker as well. So it's that contrast between the light and the dark that starts to make it all look a bit more exciting to see. And at this stage, I'm also going to use the diamond bar and start to pick out some of the brightest highlights in the eye. That, this is always quite an interesting stage because the engraving starts to have some kind of life to it once you get the highlights into the eye.
for the areas of the dog which are grey, instead of using the diamond bar for the highlighting, what I've got is this tiny little green stone. Again, it needs to be a highlight, but I don't want it as white as it is on the, the white areas of the dog. So this little green stone is letting me put in the little detailed highlights that I need on the grey. And this, for me, is an iterative process. I'll go through, do the shadows, highlight it, then have another look and decide where I need the shadows to be darker. Come back again with a rubber polisher, darken them down and go through the highlighting process again. And I might repeat that two or three times till I get the degree of shade and the degree of highlighting that I want in the final engraving. And after much repetition of shading and highlighting, that's the final outcome. And that's all I can think of to tell you about engraving pet portraits. If you do have any questions though, please just leave them in the comments. I hope it's useful. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed watching it. The next video I make, I've had two people ask me about the speed, the number of RPM to use in engraving. So I think I'll probably cover that next. It should be a lot shorter to make than this one has been, so I might get it out there a bit quicker. If you'd like to see that, then please just click subscribe. And as I say, if you have any questions at all, just leave them in the comments. Thank you very much for watching.